Hi folks, my name is Roger Bain. I own and operate Bain Custom Woodworking in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. That is just east of Nashville. I built these cabinets for a customer of mine. They are standalone cabinets that will go into her bedroom actually and they fit perfectly in the spots that she needs to. She has limited space. What I wanted to use would be soft close frameless hinges so I did some search and I found some on Amazon from a manufacturer named Berta B-E-R-T-A they are they come in a package of 10 I needed eight so I actually have two left over so I wanted to show you the hinges and how I installed them and the tools that I used to do that so if you notice here I'm using a Craig jig K-R-E-G this is their hinge jig, uh, cleaning it out there because it does clog up a little bit as you drill into that. It comes with a 1 and 3 8 inch uh, Forstner bit included with it. And you'll see here that I've cleaned out the holes and now I need to drill pilot holes for the screws. So I take the big drill off and I set this back in. But you're going to see where I have a little bit of problems getting this Forstner bit back into this hinge. Not a huge deal. The hinge is fine. The hole is fine. It's just that for some reason, it just wouldn't sit in there properly. I fussed with it a little bit, and you'll see eventually after I blow all the junk out of it that I do get this back in. And the reason that I do that is I want these pilot holes to be exactly where they need to be for these hinges. Now, I'm using uh, rigid tools in order to uh, drill these out um, they are probably the only tool that I use in the shop right now, and they've been very, very reliable for me. So now, these hinges are really nice because the door hinge portion and the cabinet portion actually come apart, which make it so much easier later on in the project when I need to take them off to finish, when I need to take the doors off. I'm not worried about removing screws, putting screws back in. These hinges can stay in or come out very, very easily. And you're going to see here, I'm going to start all of these screws, get the pilot holes started so that I can screw these in. And then I'm going to grab my four foot level because I want these hinges not only to be square to each other, but I want them square on the door so that when I put them on the cabinet, they fit properly. So my four foot level allows me to do this. And I'm a huge fan when I'm working with a softwood like Poplar and small screws. I want to use a hand screwdriver. I don't want to force these with a with a power drill driver. I just I'm more comfortable putting them in, them in by hand. So we're gonna get them all in, and these are really nice. I was a little concerned when I first got these hinges that they weren't soft closed like I wanted to, but you're gonna see here when I flip these hinges up to get them out of my way, they are actually soft closed, and you can actually watch them close up a little bit. That's without the weight of the door on them. So my door's done. Let's transition now to the cabinet itself. So I've put the cabinet on its side here and you're going to see that I'm handling multiple different measuring devices that I have in my shop. Uh, some from Craig, some from Woodpecker. And in a project like this, I need four different measurements or three different. Forget now how many. But you're going to see me pointing with my finger there to the right. That's because the instructions, the, the hinges don't come with instructions. However, on the Amazon site from the vendor, they have a wonderful video telling me exactly how to do this. So you're going to see that my doors are the exact height of my cabinets. So I'm measuring up from the bottom, two and seven eighths. Then I'm measuring down from the top, two and seven eighths. And I'm going to draw, scribe a line into the cabinet. So this is where, this is the first line. And now you're seeing I'm measuring from that line an inch and a quarter up. These two lines will represent where I'm going to put the screws. I'm going to do it on the bottom here. And now I'm going to go up and I'm going to do it on the top. Then I'm going to take my other Craig measuring device that's sitting in the cabinet. And that is set at an inch and a quarter. And I'm going to measure up each one of these lines that inch and a quarter and draw a line. That's where I'm going to put my pilot holes for the pieces of the hinge 
that go inside in the cabinet. So something here you'll see is I had drilled a lot of holes in these cabinets for adjustable shelves. Well, don't you know that one of the screws for the piece inside the cabinet landed right on top of one of those holes. So I've literally taken a match stick and I've put it in the hole. I've broke it off. I put it back in the hole again and I broke it off again. That's filling the hole up for me so that I can use that hole in the proper place for my hinge. Not a problem. It worked fine. It uh, The screw goes in really nice. That match stick works wonderful. I've used toothpick on, picks on some other things when they're smaller holes, but these match sticks work really, really well for a larger hole, uh, something like this, that, that's going to be for the adjustable shelf. So now we're just going to drill the pilot holes. And because this is a soft wood, poplar being soft enough, I don't need huge pilot holes. I just need something that I can start with. So we're going to set these in, and I'm going to give you a picture, a close-up of what the hinge inside looks like in a moment, uh, or try to anyways, uh, with my camera. But these, these hinge pieces inside the cabinet have not only the true screws that hold the piece in into the wood, but they have two other screws in there. One that will allow you to move the door um, in and out of the frame. And another one that allows you to move it up and down in the frame. And they really, really do adjust well. And you'll see that later as I adjust one of the doors. And you can see I already have one door on. So this is the second door for this cabinet. So let's go ahead and get these screws in. I don't worry too much about them being too tight at this point. Oh, by the way, um, these small screws, yeah, for these old fingers, they do tend to be a little bit tough to hold on to every once in a while. Uh, but let's get them in. Again, we're using the, the handheld screwdriver just because I'm uh, more comfortable doing that with these smaller screws so I don't strip them out. And I tighten them right down. I want these pieces in there tight. I can tell you that uh, later on, you will you probably won't see it, but if you need to loosen that screw up just a little bit when you attach the door, not a big deal. They tighten up pretty quick right after that. But I'll tell you, these hinges are so easy to put in and they snap right in. And you'll find that on the hinge themselves, there on the door part of it, there's a little bit of an ear that clips into the bottom of these inside pieces. And once you clip that in and push it down, you'll hear it snap in. So with that snap in piece, these hinges, these doors come on and off these cabinets really easy. So if I need to move these cabinets at any other time, or even when I deliver them to my client, I can take the door right off. So now we've stood the door, the cabinet up, because it's easier to put the door on. And, and I'm going to get in the way of, of you seeing what it, what it does here. Um, and it's, um, but open the hinges all the way up. You find those ears on the bottom. Find the ears on top. Literally push them in. They snap. And you can see that they snap in. And once they do, it's just that simple to put the door on. So... That's a close-up or somewhat of a close-up of what the hinges look like. Now I'm going to close the doors. And I did this on purpose, knowing that the doors probably wouldn't be, wouldn't fit correctly the very first time. And I'm okay with that because I want you to see how that I can adjust them. So the doors are soft closed exactly as they promise. Um, and these doors only need two because they're not that heavy. So once you close them, and you're going to see that the second door on the right overlaps the one on the left. Inside the hinge inside the cabinet there are two adjuster screws you can turn them in or you can turn them out in this instance I'm actually loosening them and what that does is takes that door on the right and it pulls that top towards the outside of the cabinet I did the same thing for the one on the left pulled that top of the door to the outside of the cabinet the minute I did that they automatically closed in there nice and tight now you're going to find that as I do this a second time, I'm going to have to adjust this left door. And you can do you do this both on the top and on the bottom to make sure that they adjust and they close correctly. Uh, you're going to see that the left door hangs just a little bit. Reach back in the cabinet, turn that top screw because it's not hitting on the bottom, it's only hitting on the top. And you'll see that that door just drop, drops right in there. So really happy with these hinges. I'm very happy with the way that they 
install into the doors. Very happy how they install into the inside of the cabinet. I can take these doors on and off as many times as I want very easily by flipping the switch on the cabinet hinge inside. They pop right off and I have them out in my hands. So at this point, uh, we're done with these. We've installed them all. Again, I purchased these on Amazon from a company called Berta, B-E-R-T-A. I would appreciate you if you do not subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please do that. Please look us up on Instagram, uh, Bain Custom Woodworking there. I post there regularly, much more than I do on YouTube. And then we also have a Facebook page that you can follow as well, uh, Bain Custom Woodworking. Uh, any comments, any questions, I'm always open to those. Please uh, feel free to uh, reach out to me on any of the platforms, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Again, uh, I'm out here uh, in my shop. I do this full time, so anything I can help with, please let me know. I appreciate your time, and again, keep making sawdust.